My name is uh, John Mark, and I and I'm the director of uh, Zero Waste Europe. I want to give you a very short uh, presentation about, I mean, what is Zero Waste Europe, how are we organized, and present you a new tool that I think it sets the floor for the two presentations that will come right afterward from uh, Marco about Contarina and from uh, Erika about Ljubljana. So, let's start. We are all going to learn how Open Office works today. Good. Great. So very quickly, what, what is Zero Waste Europe? I mean, our mission is to empower uh, communities to redesign our relationship with resources. As Enzo has explained very well, I mean, what is the Zero Waste concepts? What we do at the European level is try to make sure that all these little initiatives happening around Europe give them some coherence, exchange of best practices, um, have guys from all over Europe come here to Sofia today to learn from you, also to share experiences with you, and to see how we can help each other. And that's, that's the goal of the network. Now you see it bigger. So we work at two levels, supporting local groups with knowledge and tools to drive change. So um, in our website you can find information, but you can also ha find case studies, best practices, um, and also uh, we go to support the groups at the local level, but we also help to structure the movement internationally. Zero Waste Europe is the European branch of, of Gaia, which is a global organization also working on waste issues, and also we implement uh, the, the philosophy set by the Zero Waste International Alliance as well. So uh, we organ help to organize and structure this movement internationally. And we try to export as well the best practices in Europe, also to show the world that there's another way also to do waste management. It's not only about landfills and incinerators, that there's another way. And actually that our way is, uh, is cheaper, is, uh, is, is also feasible, and you can get there easily. Very quickly, this is a traditional waste management model in, uh, in Europe. This is still what is um, mostly working in Sofia, where most of the waste still goes to landfills and incinerators. More than 60% of the waste, municipal solid waste in Europe is being sent to landfills and incinerators. And then, of course, in a situation like this, and we can see it in, in Bulgaria, but also in other places uh, such as Spain and, and other parts of the world, the question is, is it better to landfill? Is it better to incinerate? I mean, how do you minimize the harm to the environment? And we believe we are trying to give an answer to the wrong question. Zero waste is about asking ourselves the right questions. The zero waste scenario changes the question because we're not talking anymore what to do with the residuals because of course that's an important part of course um, it's important and as Enzo has explained what do you do with that stuff that is not recyclable with the residual waste how do you redesign it but in a system in a zero waste system the emphasis is about job creation it's about how to bring organics back to the soils uh, how do you get quality uh, recyclable materials that create that have a market value that you can sell that you can create also uh, local jobs um, and, and make the economy work at the local level in a way that is sustainable and is not harming the environment. So in a situation like this, the reuse business uh, flourishes, uh, recycling works, and, uh, and the organics that are so harmful if being sent to landfills become soil nutrients. So we are changing the nature of the question. And of course, in this scenario, big infrastructures that lock you into, into big um, commitments for the next 20 years don't have a place because flexibility is, a, is paramount here because you want to advance as quick as possible but you don't want to be linked to contracts that uh, link you for forever. And the goal of my presentation today was to pre present you a, a new tool that we have developed. It's called zerowastecities.eu and it, it has the aim of organizing the network of zero waste municipalities that we have in Europe. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, more than 400 municipalities in Europe that have committed to go to zero waste. And I will explain what does that mean. 
Um, unfortunately, we don't have internet in the room, so I cannot show you how it works. So, but if you want to go to this uh, domain later on, it's, it's a mapping tool that allows you to see which towns in Europe have committed to zero waste. You can select it by country, by, by town, and then you can click in one of them and you can see the network and you can see their performance. How are they doing? There you can see, for example, the municipal solid waste generation in the past, in today, and in the future. Because as Enzo has said, what matters is the journey to zero waste more than where you are today. And what we see is that uh, very often when we talk about, about uh, waste management, we look at the picture today, but uh, it's very important to have uh, really the progression in time. Where are you? Where do you come from? And where do you want to go? What we are seeing in many cities in Europe, especially those cities that started uh, building infrastructure in the 80s and the 90s, is that they have reached some acceptable levels of recycling, some not even, but they have stabilized there. They have the infrastructure in place. And again, the infrastructure is very important because if you build capacity to deal with 200,000 tons of waste per year and you're producing 400,000 and 200,000 are committed to go to the incinerator, that means that, well, maybe in the next years you can increase recycling, but it will get to a moment where you cannot continue to grow recycling. And this, uh, this tool allows you to do that. In this case, you see, we have the example of Ljubljana in Slovenia. We can see that in 2010, they were separately collecting 27%. 2014, it was 61%. And more importantly, in 2025, they have committed to go to 78%. And of course, the residual waste per capita, which kind of like mixes separate collection and uh, waste generation. And now you can see that residual waste is 110 kilograms per capita, when the European average is around uh, 280, more or less. So it's well uh, below. And because and here you can see why uh, Ljubljana has adopted the zero waste uh, commitment, because you see where it was at 30%, where it is at 60%, and where does it want to go? Almost to 80%, really um, illustrating the commitment to always improve the system. Here you have some tools as well, and you, there's the possibility to look into, the, into the, some bibliography and pictures, etc. I cannot navigate into the website because uh, we don't have internet. But in any case, you can always share these statistics in Facebook, in, in Twitter, etc. You can export if you are uh, talking to a policymaker or to a waste expert or to a company. This, is inform this information is available, is online, and is for free. And an interesting tool is that we also have a benchmark tool in here. So it allows you to benchmark zero waste municipalities against non-zero waste municipalities. In this case, and again, this is I prepared before because we don't have internet, we took Ljubljana and we benchmarked it against Copenhagen in Denmark. You can export this benchmark as PDF, you can share it, and um, if you scroll down here, you would see the comparison. Again, we're still populating this database, so I mean, it's, it's not uh, up to date, but uh, data that we have for 2012 in Copenhagen, it was 32% separate collection and 425 kilograms per capita per year of waste generation. You can see that Ljubljana is performing better with these indicators. And the residual waste is 110 against 289 of residual waste. And again, um, Erika will explain the experience of Ljubljana, but you know that Slovenia joined the European Union in 2004, whereas uh, Denmark has been a model for waste management for some decades. You can see that data of today really proves that there's another way of doing things that is not reliable, relying on incineration, and then it's working. How to become a zero waste municipality? All of that is explained in the website, but um, again, uh, zero waste is a journey. How we measure uh, the success in this journey is really on the commitment. Any town can start becoming a zero waste. What, import what is important is to start walking in the right direction. Therefore, any town in Sofia 
can decide to join the zero waste path. And of course, joining the zero waste path means establishing some goals, a path for the next years on how are you going to increase separate collection? How are you going to put into place uh, waste reduction measures? How are you going to separate the organics? Etc. 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 What matters is that civil society, together with the institutions, we organize, we set this path to work and to walk towards uh, zero waste. This is how it has been working in Italy, in Slovenia, how it's working in Spain, and we're trying to also to work in other places. And this um, has allowed municipalities that were, for example, in Guipúzcoa, where only five years ago the average separate collection rate was around 20-25%, now is already above 50%. They are already, in only five years, have managed to fulfill the European targets for recycling for 2020. Modern cities like Copenhagen or Stockholm or Berlin will struggle to meet the European targets in 2020 of 50% recycling because of this infrastructure they have. Um, so that's in a nutshell, and you can have more detail there, how to become a zero waste municipality. In Bulgaria, the only thing you will need to do is just uh, get together with uh, people from Zero Waste Bulgaria and just elaborate this path, start walking in this direction, and we can include you in the map, and we can follow over the next years if you need help uh, at the technical level or political level, visibility, we can provide you that, and you, we can help you walk, uh, start walking towards Zero Waste. And finally, if you want to learn more about these stories, this is one of the resources that we have, and you can have it also outside. It's the, the case studies that we are publishing from different experiences in Spain, in Italy, in Slovenia. Um, we are uh, Contarina that is going to explain now why Marco and Erika is going to talk about Ljubljana that just came out last week. They are all also available in Bulgarian and in many other languages, showing that, uh, well, this is already happening, zero waste is happening now, and of course, this is uh, still an ongoing story. That was my story. Um, I invite you to now listen carefully to the experience of Contarina and to Ljubljana. You'll see that it's possible, it's happening, and if you have questions during the conference, just uh, come to us and we're happy to help. Thank you.